Hello and welcome to Good Morning UK Have Your Say, a Force for Goods mid-morning show broadcasting to you live from our nerve centre here in the great British city of Glasgow with me, your host, Alistair McConaughey. And this is the show where we're British, we love the United Kingdom, and we want to stay together. So folks, please do send in your comments and say hello, because this is the show where many of you can basically get whatever is on your mind off your mind. Good morning to TC, he was straight in there on YouTube, as is Susie Davis. What a wonderful thing to say. Scotland's membership of the United Kingdom is a blessing to us all. Susie D from West Sussex and proud member of Clan McPherson. Linda, good to see you again from a dull overcast southeast London. Well, oh my, here in Glasgow, looking out the window of our office, all I can say is I'm glad I'm not Hamza Yusuf because there is so much whiteness out there. He must just be going crazy. He must look out and he must go... My street, wait! My garden, wait! My car, wait! So spare a thought for poor old Hamza Yusuf as he looks out at all the whiteness. But for the rest of us, it's actually a nice day here in Glasgow. It's a nice fresh morning. Derek, good to see you again. And... Tommy from Glenrothes, as always, good to have you, Tommy. And also Graham, who watches, and Debbie. Debbie won the competition last week. We've got a competition coming up at quarter to the hour. And, th no, sorry, just before the hour. And we've also got a guest coming up at 11 o'clock, which is the very interesting David Scott of UK Column. He was suggested to us by, by somebody last week. And he is delighted to talk to us. More about that in a minute. Good morning to Ibrox Park, as always. And Alan. God bless the union, says Alan. Rich says, good morning. Have a great British day. Same to you, Rich. Thank you for, for that. Chris Livingston liked the wee dig there at, at Humza, Mr. Useless. And he's not useless, unfortunately, because he is bringing in a very, very serious law the so-called hate speech law, which is the anti-free speech law. So whatever he he directs his 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 uh, I was his um, energy, shall we say, to really messing up everybody else's lives in a bad way here in Scotland. All right, Graham and James from Leeds. Finn, it seems to be. Not quite on message with that one. Debbie, I'll give someone else a chance for the competition this week. Well, Debbie, have a go. Have a go. It's the same prize. It's our Union Jack shortbread. And Dottie from County Tyrone. Folks, if you are watching on Facebook and if it asks you, if it says, let StreamYard see your comments, Please do let StreamYard see your comments. This allows us to see them too. Some people get asked that. So just say yes if StreamYard asks to see your comments. So we are a force for good and broadcasting to you this morning. Now, a question to you, and we're going to be discussing this in greater depth with David Scott at the top of the hour, is Nicola on the way out is Nicola on the way out. She and her crew have an amazing talent for self-preservation. Is this just another little hitch in their journey uh, onwards forever? Or is the end finally in sight? I'd be interested in your thoughts on that. David Scott's certainly going to give us 
his opinion. He's been looking into this conflict that's going on in the SNP, which for outsiders like ourselves is really just an argument between two sides of a nut house, one of which is marginally less crazy than the other. So many of us are not really that interested in it, but David's been drilling down to find out what exactly is going on there, and I'm looking forward to him explaining that to us all. But what are your thoughts? Is Nicola on the way out? Um, um, so, yes, somebody's saying that, what do we think of Douglas Ross? That will be the leader of the Tories. I think he's a, he's, he's a fine young man doing a good job in difficult circumstances, and we wish him the very, very best because we need as many pro-UK unionist voices in Holyrood as absolutely possible. Frankie says, hello, Alistair, excellent work, force for good, stronger together, always together, united together. Together forever and ever, to part, Rick Astley. Do hope so, time to get rid of Nicola, says Derek in response to that question. But Dottie points out what we all think. She seems to have more lives than the average cat. We thought that actually about Alex Salmond, and then look what happened to him. So, so there's always hope, isn't there? There's always hope. But there's always other people waiting in the wings to take over from Nicola Sturgeon. And this is, this is what we have to remember, is that some people, out, some people in the SNP are, you know, fruitcakes. Grade A stamped and sealed 24 carat fruitcakes. And so, some, as we always say, be careful what we wish for. Uh, Tommy says there is a, a petition for a, for no to a second referendum out there. Uh, that That's right. It should reach 100,000. Last time I looked, it was heading towards that. Um, Derek says, don't know how she has lasted so long. Um she has lasted so long because she's obviously got talent there. There's a lot of people in the, the SNP who do not have the diplomatic nous of her. And so they never get anyone near the top. So she's she was quite good for what she did in that environment that she was. She was one of the better ones in that environment of crazies that she was coming up in. And she remains still one of the better less crazy ones and I think that's why she's managed to stay where she's stayed for so long Rich is watching on his mobile and Bill says she's as slippery as the fish that she's named after exactly the salmon salmon and salmon and sturgeon a very strange combination there of leaders um yeah, so I on Good Morning Britain, Good Morning Britain this morning, right? Uh, I I checked it to see what they were talking about, to see if there was anything that we could pick up on today. But you know, Good Morning Britain really just has has uh, two two topics that they cover. One is COVID and promoting hysteria around COVID, and the other is still anti-Trump hatred. Two days in a row they've been going anti-Trump hatred, okay? They can't give it up, so there's nothing there that that uh, we want to really pick up on. Um, although, I do want to just, just say that, you know, some people are concerned about the, the crazy... Um, situation that we're in at the moment with not just the COVID lockdown, um, but with just a general sense of unease, which is pervading the population in uh, in Britain at the moment. And trying to get to the bottom of this, of what exactly is going on, is a hard job. But there's been one or two articles recently that have really helped to explain it. And one of them, which I'll just, uh, I'll just, 
just uh, I'll put up the website there. It's called The 30 Tyrants. How, the deal that the American elite chose to make with China has a precedent in the history of Athens and Sparta by Lee Smith. Now, this is a big dissertation, basically. It's not so much an article. And it was published on the 4th of February. And he makes some extremely good points here about essentially America is being run by an oligarchy, an oligarchy of power, which finds um, which finds strange alliances across big business, across sport, across entertainment, and especially across big tech. And all of these organizations have uh, similarly connections with and interests in China. And China has been able to get its its uh, tentacles, as it were, into American politics and into the American con- economy to such a point that the oligarchy in America is almost dependent upon Chinese money. And this person, I watched him, Lee Smith, was interviewed by Tucker Carlson yesterday. And he made a point which... I hadn't really thought, but which was extremely good, which was that, you know, Jeff Bezos, who runs Amazon, he is the biggest importer, or at least one of the biggest importers of Chinese goods into America and indeed into the Western world. And so basically he depends for his wealth, which is massive, upon keeping the Chinese happy and indeed according to Lee Smith, doing what the Chinese want. So if the Chinese don't like, for example, Parler, which was a free speech platform that was critical of the Chinese, then they can put pressure on Jeff Bezos to get rid of the Parler servers. That through their network, they, they um, they can dominate not just America, but the West. And what Lee Smith is pointing out is that it's essentially a fight between the globalist oligarchies who dominate the Western world and the the pro-nation people, such as Trump was. Trump came along and he said, we have to stop doing all this business with China and sending off all our uh, jobs to China. And of course, the oligarchy did not like that because it was from China that they were making all their money. And so what we're looking at at the moment is the oligarchy having taken over and got back into power by fair means or foul. And the entire Western media, the entire Western media running interference, covering over what is in fact going on. So all of this is going to come out in time. But one of the things there is it is a crucial battle between globalists and nationalists, for want of a better expression. And China, Chinese power and money is behind a lot of what is going on at the moment. And and I would be interested in seeing also the extent to which British media companies are inveigled and involved in that in that issue. Okay, now it's quarter to the hour. I'm just going to to do what I do every quarter to the hour, which is mention our our this day in British history. And listen closely, folks, because it will be in this two or three minute section that I'm going to give you the information that the question, the competition at the top of the hour will be based upon. Now, on this day in British history, this is the 10th of February. Well, it was on the 10th of February in 1972 that the Island of Rockall Act came into effect. Now, this was to make provision for the incorporation of the the islet or the large rock in the northwest outside uh, in the northwest Atlantic called Rockall to integrate it into the United Kingdom. Hitherto, it had not been formally integrated, and today it is the most northwestern part of the British Isles. And it's 290 miles west of Great Britain, and the nearest place that's inhabited is North Uist. 
and it's the Western Isles Council which takes administrative control over it. And the British essentially acquired it in the 1950s by landing on it because they feared that the Soviets would install listening equipment. Now, the Republic of Ireland doesn't recognise British ownership of the rock, but there's not very much the, Uni the, the Republic of Ireland can do about that, you know. Uh, but we in the United Kingdom have formal sovereignty over it. And in fact, we made a wee tribute to Rock Hall in our poem, The Union Jack Forever, which is based upon the maple leaf forever. And we said, from Rock Hall in the wild Atlantic to all the sea and coasts around, in this land may peace forever be our joy. May plenteous store abound well, that's Rockall, and it is part of the United Kingdom, regardless of what the Republic of Ireland might say about it. And I want to show you a great thing that we have here in our office connected to Rockall. Now, this is a painting, which I'm just about to show you, by the aviation artist Ronald Wong, and it's called The Mighty Hunters. And he was commissioned to paint this by RAF Kinloss in March 2010 when the Nimrod aircraft were decommissioned. Now, we have other submarine hunters now, different aircraft, but the Nimrods were decommissioned in March 2010 and Ronald Wong painted this fantastic, this fantastic picture, right? Let me hope I can get it now and I'll, I'll describe it to you. That's that's Rockall right there. That's a Nimrod flying over it. In the background, at the tip there of the Nimrod, you can see an Akula-class submarine, which was the Nimrod's main adversary. And in the top there, there's a little vignette, which is in honour of the soldiers of Afghanistan, because the Nimrod was also in Afghanistan. So that's a fantastic print that you can get from Ronald Wong. And we've got that. that that's proudly displayed here in our office because we find it we find it a very British a very British painting by Ronald Wong. Go to RonaldTKWong.com and he's got a whole list of aviation aviation paintings that he's done and that's a print. That, that we acquired from Ronald Wong that features Rockall. There's not many paintings that feature Rockall, and that's one of them. Dottie says, love your keeping British history alive and keeping us informed. Exactly, because the past never leaves us. That's one of the lessons that the film The Dig, which I mentioned last week, past never leaves us and it's always part of who we are the good the bad and the indifferent and we don't separate it out like oh this is good stuff or this is bad stuff you know it's all just it's all just much of a muchness and we just uh, we just deal with it um going back to what i was just talking about there uh bill says amazon facebook twitter can now control free speech they need regulated or the only opinion we, we will hear is theirs. Hey, Sandra, good to see you. Good to see you. And, and Marjorie from the Isle of Arran. And James makes a good point there, which many of us actually come, are coming around to, 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 to basically accepting, is that China won the election for Biden, but certainly through the power of the social media to to cut out people that they disagree with. And this is a problem that's coming up now in Scotland because, as you know, the there's this anti-free speech law that's going through Holyrood and Hamza, Hamza Yusuf wants to get that done and dusted by the end of this parliamentary session, which will be just the day or so before Holyrood closes for the 
Holyrood election on the 6th of May, if indeed that is going ahead. So he wants to get that done and dusted. And of course, he's got a majority in the parliament to do that. And the the only people who are really talking out against it are the conservatives who don't have enough who don't have enough people to overturn it. So we could be looking at serious, serious um, speech infractions. Is that the right word? Coming up against the people of Scotland in the the next few years. So we have to just be conscious of the way things are going. But we have to see, we have to recognise who's doing this, and we have to remember who's doing it because they're doing it, uh, they're doing it to shut down those that they disagree with. And because of the strange times at the moment, where we're all being kept at at home or encouraged to stay home. It's like they've almost got a free reign just to kind of do what they want, you know. And if anybody protests, you know, if one was to organise a protest against it, they would shut us down because they would say that we're endangering people's lives. And that's that's how it's going to go forward in the future, is that if you try to speak out, you're endangering people's lives, you know. That's how they're just going to play this COVID hysteria going on and on. However, let's not be downhearted things will change because people at the end of the day will organize against it in some way shape or form hitherto unknown and unseen but we do need to recognize what we're up against before we can move forward on these matters well yeah michael let's like go there on mass and make your voices heard well hmm it's an interesting point an interesting point and uh, let's Let's just see what a force for good can can maybe do about it. Something needs to be done, as uh, as the famous phrase has it. Um, Samuel says, "Good morning again. Good morning to see you, Samuel. Glad you've been here every week. That's an amazing." picture it is indeed it is indeed thanks for that i'm extremely concerned about this free speech law the ancient athenians knew the importance of it and i worry for what this could mean samuel you're not you're not the only one who is concerned about about those sorts of things um absolutely and they have this they have this thing right we we wrote an article about it and it is up on our website a forceforgood.uk if you if you go down to see Jul- July 2020, we wrote free speech for Scots. What's wrong with the proposed hate crime bill? We show what's wrong about it. And we went through it pretty extensively. And our recommendations were th- that it should not be on the statute book at all. But if it were going to be on the statute book, then several things had to be done to change it one of which was the aggravated offences concept, just has to get thrown out. This is the idea that if you commit a crime against somebody who falls into a particular protected characteristic, that makes the crime worse than if that person was just normal. So if you've got somebody like me, for example, who's generally normal in every way, and somebody commits a crime against me, then that's bad enough. But if you go and commit the same crime against somebody else because they've got a particular um, personal predilection on some matter or are different in in some way, then it's worse on them. That that you should get punished more for attacking that person than for attacking me. That's, it's just, that's that's so wrong. So wrong. Um, Also, the... um, the, the freedom of expression clauses were not fail safe either, and lots of things quite wrong with it, including unfortunately the idea that you should be persecuted for speech inside your own home. Now it looks like that's going into the into the law because that passed yesterday, passed a committee who um, who uh, put that into the law, and this committee, right, nine people on it, so seven to two voted for this. So that's nine people who are making the laws basically for the whole of Scotland on these matters. The the Holyrood committee system, which proposes changes and votes on changes, is absurd. It's, it's only like a small handful of people doing it. It's not like you have a big major debate even in Parliament. It's just 
a small number of people. Anyway, that's Holyrood for us. You can show your disapproval of these parties by making sure you cast your vote appropriately on the 6th of May, if indeed that's going ahead. Lots of proposals in the bill are unenforceable and are therefore bad law. That's true, Dotty. That's true. Richard says, the free speech law would pit children against parents around the dinner table or in the living room. If everyone took it literally and reported everything they didn't like, the system would crumble in a day. Yeah, true. True. And Margaret says, the assembly needs to be shut down. They're wasting our country. Well, there is a party standing that wants to abolish the Scottish Parliament. I know they're standing on the regional list. I don't know much about them, but certainly that's that's uh, that's that that party is standing uh, in some of the regions. I know. I know they've got a website. I haven't really looked at it. Abolish the Scottish Parliament Party. It's called. And Stephen says, the courts could be full with thousands of cases. Because it will be one person's word against another's, it will eventually get thrown out. I'd like to, I'd like to think it would get thrown out. The the Scottish judiciary, unfortunately, tends to. Tends to, uh, you know, Scotland's such a small jurisdiction that the judges are always watching their back to see who's in power, and it's, uh, well, we. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Now we've got a great guest coming up. And I see that he's in the waiting room at the moment. We're going to bring him in at 11 o'clock. Now, this is David Scott. And we'll bring David in at 11 o'clock. And um, Michael just saying there that the little box you asked to turn on your TV is constantly monitoring you all the time. Fond. Hopefully someone will take the bull by the horns. To get a whistle, I think. I think um, what are you referring to there, Yvonne? I think you're talking about a unionist club. Okay, well, check out Yvonne Ralston's Facebook page if you live in that area. Okay, now... Let me bring in our guest. Now, just before I do so, I'll, I want to uh, get rid of this banner. Our guest this morning is David Scott. Now, David will introduce himself and his work, but I've been extremely impressed with much of what he has been doing. He works for an organisation called UK Column. Some of you will know of UK Column. It's been going for a long while. So let me just bring in David, who looks like he's ready to be added to the stream here. Good morning, David. Hello, thank you very much for having me on today. You're very welcome, David. And you were suggested to us last week by a chap called Alexander who said get David on because he knows his stuff and we got sent a YouTube link which was you talking to Brian Gerrish on uh, with the UK column uh, program and you were basically explaining for the rest of us what was going on within the Scottish National Party right now. Now um before we get into that, David, could you just introduce yourself for the benefit of the viewers? Explain what it is you do with UK Column and what indeed UK Column is. Yes, U- UK Column is, is we, we like to think, it's the, it's the doyen of the UK alternative media in that it's kind of it. Uh, we run uh, a, a regular news broadcast at 1pm, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Uh, plus uh, a lot of uh, specials and uh, further further output. So we're looking at say, things such as economics, we're looking at the constitution, we're looking at the law, and we're plotting and commentating on and informing people 
about the decline in our nation and particularly in its governance, but also in its culture and its and its general society. So we are we are providing a space where this can be discussed. Uh, we are providing information regarding it, and we're providing increasingly. Um, a, a, a narrative that's other than the mainstream, because the mainstream's become one voice. If you if you read the Guardian, if you if you if you if you watch the BBC or any of the other mainstream uh, media sources or television sources, you're getting one message again and again and again. Uh, that message uh, in the year 2020 is, of course, be afraid, be afraid of your neighbour, be afraid of leaving your home, uh, and obey, and. Uh, and, and we take a different view. We take a view that's much more what you would term traditionally British. And we we express this. And the, the reaction has been spectacular this last year. Uh, the, perhaps the most moving part of the sort of response that we're getting from our audience uh, is that we are very often, I mean, very often, getting people saying, well, you, you keep us sane. And, and I think the reason that, for that is the... The, the, there's at least one news source which isn't afraid, it's not terrified, it's not trying to put fear in the audience. And people can hear a normal discussion with ordinary people looking at these issues and the, the sheer reasonableness of it, it, it encourages people. And, it, and the, the phrase we keep getting back from the, offer, the, the audience is, we, 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 we love what you do, you keep us sane. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. And what I like also about your programme is that you've got several presenters, all of whom are extremely uh, knowledgeable about a wide range of topics and are able to organise their thoughts in a very clear and concise way. And each programme, I think it's... It, I mean, it must be a full-time job for for the people who are doing it, the presenters certainly, which is which is two two chaps. Um, who started UK Column? Was it Brian Brian Gerrish? It, it, it was Brian Gerrish. UK Column started as a local newspaper in Devonport called the Devonport Column. The Devon the Devonport Column being a, a local um, landmark, hence the name. And ah, that right. was talk that was talking about corruption in local government it was talking about dodgy land deals it was talking about the strange decisions being made by local authorities um, that was greeted with um, a great deal of hostility by local authorities and people were getting threatened and uh, the news was very unpopular in some circles uh, and, and Brian had to go through a lot of personal intimidation uh, including you know uh, used type hypodermic needles turning up in his flower boxes and things like this at his house and threats and visits from the police. But the information was sound, the information was accurate and uh, he had the guts to stand the line. And then he was joined by, by Mike Robinson who is, is the other stalwart who, who, who makes the, the whole thing tick. Um, Mike's background is in, is in IT and, and, and uh, related matters. So he helps run the, the infrastructure, or he's the main man running the infrastructure of the organisation. Um, and uh, for many years now, we've been putting out a news broadcast uh, on a regular basis, and uh, the, the audience is growing steadily. We passed uh, one YouTube video, passed 100,000. That's the first time we've ever passed that, that uh, particular threshold. Uh, that was just last week. So the audience has been growing uh, very steadily during uh, during the, the, the pandemic year, where we've been uh, having something to say that is quite different from the mainstream. Exactly, exactly. And the mainstream is talking in one voice, and uh, to an extent that makes you wonder what's going on, because the mainstream is meant to be a lot of competing different ideas against each other. But when everybody is talking from the same uh, sheet, you just you just wonder this is absolutely crazy something is going wrong here so this is your time the time to shine for uk column i'm not surprised you've had a lot of good uh, response this year i've this year and uh, last year i watched the uk column more than i've ever watched it before as well just to to get what's going on as well because i'm very impressed with with all of you brian's ex royal navy 
officer and he that comes out i think in his attitude he's very cool and calm and collected and unruffled you know he's he's one of these people that breeds a sense of confidence in the message that he's given and i met brian oh about 20 years ago when he was just starting out with i think he had maybe retired well he must have retired from the navy at that time and he came up to scotland to to meet me because I was involved with various anti-EU work and also with monetary reform. Um, I published two newsletters for 10 years. One was called Sovereignty, which was about national self-determination, and another was called Prosperity, which was called Freedom from Debt Slavery. And he came up because he was fascinated with these topics and and very very impressed with the chap. And that was before even he had started his... his, um, his um, newspaper which i also have got several copies of here in the office now you have been i don't envy this task that you've been doing which is following what's going on with the infighting within the scottish national party now what is the state of play as of today on that because i heard that alex salmon was going to be uh, up in front of some tribunal, what is it, not tribunal, or a, a committee meeting or something about that. And did that go ahead? And if it didn't go ahead, what's the, what's what's happening there? Well, no, it didn't go ahead. This is, he was in front of what's known as the Salmon Committee, the, the, the formal name being the Parliamentary uh, Review of Handling of Sexual Harassment Claims or, or something along those lines. So this was this was looking into the issue of how the Scottish government handled the allegations of sexual misconduct against Alex Salmon, and remember the background of that was um, they essentially had <clears throat> excuse me had a, an an internal hearing within the Scottish government and and announced Alex Salmon uh, guilty as charged. Uh, he took that to judicial review. And at judicial review, the government case collapsed in less than a day. And the reason it collapsed is in order to defend the case, the government would have needed to put out information that they were desperate to keep from the Scottish public. And because they couldn't release the information, they had no option other than to concede the case. And then Police Scotland decided to get involved. And then the Crown Office decided to get involved. And then Alex Salmon was facing 14 charges. So the, the significance of the 14 charges is juries feel obligated to convict on something. So this, this, was, a, this was getting Alec Salmon, Alec Salmon done. That's what was going on here. And the Crown Office, who have been called institutionally corrupt, uh, were at the heart of it, and Police Scotland were at the heart of it. And this was a, a political measure. Now, it's then come out that all the allegations that were made against Alex Salmon were coming from people in one very small political clique within the SNP. There was no allegations from anywhere else. Uh, and it looks more and more like a, a political decision to, to end his career, to get some sort of uh, sexual charge held up against him so that politically he would be dead. So this, uh, the majority within the SNP who support Alex, believe and are expressing in the most violent terms has been a Nicola Sturgeon operation to remove a political opponent. Yes, yes. So yes. What, what, what didn't happen yesterday was Alex didn't appear before the committee. Um, the, the reason being, he, he seems to be facing the risk of contempt of court charges if he goes and tells the truth. So this is what we've come to in Scotland, right? That, that telling the truth, going up under oath and, and telling the whole truth is actually now contempt of court. It's actually now illegal um, yeah. <laughs> to tell the truth. And because of that position, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't go in front of the committee. But it's all been published in The Spectator last night. So Alex Salmon has been absolutely explicit that Nicola Sturgeon lied to the Scottish Parliament, she misled the Scottish Parliament, she misrepresented what meetings were about. She said that things were um, 
uh, party business when they were government business, and uh, she lied to Parliament. And basically, his view is she has to resign. And of course, the Sturgeon view and the Sturgeon group within the SNP view is that there's nothing to see here, move along. These are all baseless conspiracy theories. Yes, because there is two groups here, isn't there, within the SNP? There's the pro-Sturgeonites and there's the others, some of whom may see the, a main chance, perhaps, to, to, to depose her and get their own um, people into, into power. What's your... What's your understanding of these two groups? I know you you mentioned it. There's a sort of ideological difference between them, isn't there? And it, what is that difference? And to what extent is that creating what's going on here at the moment? Um, the, yeah, the, the difference is actually quite profound. I mean, th these people shouldn't be in the same party. Uh, you've You've got people the likes of someone like Alex Neal, right? Who, or, or Jim Sillers, who are, um, what would, rational and, and make a case, but recognize reality. Okay, so if you could, people you can have a discussion with, you could actually sit down and say, right, your position is um, you, you want an independent Scotland. Okay, and you could have a rational discussion about what that means, about what the barriers are, about what the pros are, what the cons are, and it would be understandable, right? There would be, you'd be using words to describe reality. That's what you'd be doing. Yeah. In the Sturgeon uh, side of things, you're not using words to describe reality, right? You're using words as witchcraft to create reality. So, mm. the, so the, the Sturgeon clique will say, um, things about transgenderism, right? That, that people recognize as utterly unreal. But in the Sturgeon world, these are real. Mm. In the Sturgeon world, they can talk about uh, the rule of law and at the same time say, we're going to arrest you for what you might say around your dinner table and get your kids to inform on you. And, yes. and when you say, no, you can't do that, that's utterly fascist. Um, they, they look at you as though you're crazy. Your sturgeon will pull, you know the face, right, where she looks like this is just ridiculous. I, I, I can't believe I'm hearing this. My, my ears, oh, my ears. And, and <laughs> tries, to, tries to say that, no, you can't say that because that's so unreasonable um, that it's, it's unsayable. I'm certainly not prepared to listen to it. And tries to shut you down because they're of the postmodern left. The postmodern left have got a very interesting take on things they don't believe in anything they don't believe in an independent scotland that's why we're trying to become independent and at the same time trying to rejoin the eu and be ruled by them they don't believe in individual liberty they don't believe in right and wrong they only believe in one thing and that's power and what you're seeing here worked out in the salmon affair is what happens if you take someone like nicola sturgeon my opinion not that bright but very ambitious who has been captured by a philosophy that says there's nothing other than power and you give her the opportunity to run with that. What does she do? She ends up stabbing her mentor in the back because in comparison to him, she doesn't look very good. That's mm -hmm. what you get. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. There's, there's, there's uh, as you say there, there's a fear as well of it, and, but I like the phrase that you made there about how she uses words as witchcraft to create reality, and sometimes you get that feeling that this is the world that we're living in at the moment, where a politician can say one thing and do the exact opposite. And you made the very good point there about the anti-free speech law. As long as they just keep banging on about hate and saying saying it's to stop people hating then people will um, not realize what is, you know, the dangerous elements of it. Similarly with, the, with the, the COVID thing, if you happen to disagree with the consensus, even in a small way, you'll be accused of wanting basically everybody else to die 
of endangering people's lives when in fact all you want to do is just to get on with your own life in the way that we all used to get on with it in the past and and but but they've they've created a reality uh, which is a false reality it's like a false frame and they're trying to f fit us all into it and i don't think that they can at, at the moment i think this may in a way be be um, the end of it may, it may be like the death throes of the system um well this, this we, is the point this is the point i was making the brian garish on on the, the the video you referred to which we called progressive collapse um mm. because nicola sturgeon and her little team have imported these these ideas and have imported them from america from basically some very dodgy um French Jewish philosophers uh, who, who, who were working through the middle part of the 20th century outlining these ideas. Very clever. I mean, stunningly clever. This, this is a, an attack upon Enlightenment thinking. And in terms of a criticism of Enlightenment thinking, it is brilliant. But in terms of what they then put in its place, it is tragic. It is dreadful. So they've imported these ideas, which are all about power and, and about control, and about how you silence opposition. And they've, they've run them into the, the, the national policy. They've run them into the Scottish government, and they are everywhere. Um, take the name person scheme, dearly departed, at least in, in legislative terms, although it's still in, the, in, in policy. The, the people who came together to fight that, who were beautiful people, and a mixture of Christians, old-school Labour, old-school um, Tory, Old school nationalist Jim Sillers was part of that fight. Um, you had libertarians, you had all sorts of people. The one thing that you could say is that they believed in something. They had some intellectual ground in which to stand. They didn't just believe in power, they believed in something above power, something that was more important than just wielding power. And they, they came together to fight that. What were they called? What was the weaponization of the language? You're putting children's lives at risk. You're enabling, enabling paedophilia. You're just abandoning children to, to suffering. You want to see children die. That's the sort of stuff they were, they were, they were facing for saying, no, we don't want this, the Scottish state to put a third parent above the child's natural parents into every family and to collate data without the parent's knowledge on the child, on every re related adult and from every source up to and including a taxi driver taking the child to school. That is the Stasi. That's, that's what the Eastern Europeans had. That's what the East Germans had. We don't want, we don't want totalitarianism. I, and the, the response was, oh, you're a child murderer. No, we don't want totalitarianism. And the, the, the Scottish government and the Nicola Sturgeon clique lost that argument because after you got past the scare quotes, after you got past the, the you were literally Hitler response, they had nothing else. They didn't understand their own case. The people who were fighting it, who studied exactly what the Scottish government were putting out, beat the Scottish government with their own information because they actually read it. And the people who had this blind faith in the state didn't read what the state was doing, didn't think critically, and couldn't carry the public support. Yes, yes, yeah. David, you are extremely wise on these matters, and we must get you in again. Now, if people want to follow you personally, how would they go about doing that I, i'm on twitter albion underscore rover at albion underscore rover uh from which you might know the rough geographical place from which i come um and uh, i was I, I was i was i was born halfway between adrianian's football club and albion rovers football club but age three when i first what, started going to see the football i couldn't see over the wall at Airdrie, but albion rovers had a fence so that was my <laughs> first club um so uh, yeah, Albion underscore, underscore Rover uh, on Twitter. Uh, Northern Exposure is the YouTube channel which has got interviews and we're looking at many things of importance there. 
Uh, it, a lot of it to do with the, the, the issue of protecting children, uh, a lot of it to do with uh, the issue of freedom and, uh, and, and having space to have a proper discussion so that we can talk and so that we can think. Um, and then on UK Column, it's ukcolumn.org. It's the main website, and uh, UK Column has its own uh, YouTube channel with uh, all the news on um, uh, from all the various dates and all the specials are available there. Great. Great, David. I'm going to say goodbye now. It's 11.20, but thank you so much for coming on. Please do give my best to Brian and Mike and to Alex of UK Column. They and and convey the extent to which I'm really really impressed by just just the way that they handle the volume of information that comes out each day and the product that they create at the end of the day. So thank you very much. It's been a real David. pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, take care. We'll see you again. I'll take you out of the studio now. Bye. Bye bye. Good stuff there. Um that was David Scott of UK Column and Susie says informative interview. Thanks, David. And Linda says love listening to David Scott. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Rose here says I enjoyed listening to David Scott. Great to know there are people out there who live in the real world and see the SNP for what they are. Keep going, David and Alistair. We need people like you fighting our fight. Absolutely. Absolutely. And James says, uh, Susie says, informative interview. Thanks, David. And, and James says, David is a great speaker. He certainly is indeed. Bill says, excellent guest. Again, if anybody's got suggestions for guests, please do tell me. And we'll see what we can do. McGregor, McGregor says, wonderful interview. Thank you. Absolutely. Wouldn't it be good if we had people like... You know, you could wake up in the morning to Good Good Morning Britain and they had people like David Scott on and they weren't getting shouted down or anything like that. What a different world we would live in. However, we don't live in that world. We live in the world that we live in. <laughs> Tommy says, very educational. We'll listen to his station. TC says, top filler is David Scott. And Tommy says, well said, David. And something that I never said prior to 11 was the competition. I forgot to mention the competition, but we're going to do it anyway because we've got seven minutes left. So those of you who are, who are on the ball, um, and it's a competition for this Walker's shortbread, which is Union Jack shortbread. And please send the answer to us by email, and it will be the first person who sends in the correct answer by email and we'll see if anybody can get that answer and it's here's the email to send to contact at a force for good dot uk and the question was i showed a painting called the mighty hunters which featured rock all which on this day 10th of february 1972 was officially integrated into our great united kingdom and that painting showed Rockall, it showed a Nimrod, it showed a submarine, and it showed some British soldiers. My question to you is, what is the name of the artist who painted that painting? Okay, what is the name of the artist who painted The Mighty Hunters, which was the, the picture that I just showed you? I'll show it to you again because I love it so much. What was the name of the artist that did this one? Okay. Fire in your answers and we'll see if we have a winner. Now, folks, when you're watching this, please do sh click the share button if you're on YouTube or just give us a thumbs up. It all helps. And if you're on Facebook and you're watching, please also share this broadcast because, you know, we do drop a lot of good knowledge on this program and we want to grow the the number of people who watch it because we, we've got 
stuff that's not being said. You know, you're not going to see this on Good Morning Britain. And we wouldn't even want to appear on Good Morning Britain. Why would we even want to? Just to get shouted down? We wouldn't want to do that. Uh, so this is what we do. We do Good Morning UK. Have your say. And the potential here is quite great for it. So please do share so other people can can get to hear about it. Derek says, really knowledgeable pair of intelligent guys. Well, thank you, David. That's a nice thing to say. TC says, Kate Hoey. Well, there's a thought. Kate Hoey, and we could talk about the the problem with the the um, border in this, the uh, Irish Sea. Bill says, what's this? The UK Union Voice on Facebook is good. Yes, yes, it is a good page, the UK Union Voice. I don't know if they've got anybody there who would want to to speak in the sense that I don't know if their admins um, want to go public. I, I don't know. We could find out. Pedro says, spot on. Good. Well, let's see if we have got a winner of our competition. My apologies. And we do have a winner. We've got several. We've got several people there. Um, and... They all fired in very, very quickly. Now, I'm going to write up here who the winner is because we do have a a, a winner. Um, let me just stop that. Um, yes. We've got the winner and the winner's name... is let me just check I've spelt that properly and the winner is <laughs> I'm sure that Piers Morgan has somebody to do all of this for him. But here is the winner. Samuel Brunel Elliott. Samuel, please send us your address via that email and we will get this off to you today. OK, congratulations to Samuel for winning the competition. Debbie says, Neil Oliver would be a good guest. Absolutely, wouldn't he? Sorry, Andrew Neil. Andrew Neil. And Neil Oliver. And Neil Oliver. So that's three. We've got Kate Hoey, Andrew Neil. Imagine getting Andrew Neil on. That would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> and Neil Oliver. Well, Neil Oliver would very possibly be up for it because he is a he's a fantastic fellow and we quoted a lot of neil oliver in our wee book a wee book for the union which sells regularly if you haven't seen this i do suggest that you get it um it's available from our shop um which is at a force for good uk forward slash shop hyphen one We've got quite a lot of pro-British merchandise on there, um, including this fantastic little 56-page pocketbook. And we've got some classic quotes by Neil Oliver about the importance of maintaining, the importance of maintaining the, the union. Because if we neglect to maintain it, the temple will fall, all of it will be destroyed, and so the work of centuries will be undone. Well, we never want that to happen, and we will do our best in the circumstances that we've got in order, in order to ensure that that never happens. Folks, thank you so much for all your comments this morning. Another hour has gone flying in. 
well done Samuel Brunel Elliott for winning the prize another hour has gone flying in McGregor McGregor says such a great show Alistair thank you God bless could you get Paddy Hogg from Saving Scotland Party wonderful Christian man who shouts about the deceit I've heard of the Saving Scotland Party I think they're a new one if he is happy to appear on here we'll certainly um, we'll certainly see what we can do um, I'll make a note of that right now Saving Scotland Party Paddy Hogg I'm a, I'm, I think I've seen a video of him Give him some publicity prior to the election. Find out what's going on. That might be quite interesting. Well, there's one. May from Glasgow. I know who you're referring to, Stephen. Let's get May on as well. If she's up for that. Tommy enjoyed the show. As did Alan. Thank you, Alan. Sorry that you just missed the prize there by a nanosecond, I think it was. And Debbie, and all the best to you. Folks, it's the end of the show. Please share, and it just remains for me to say, God bless the United Kingdom, and God save the Queen. See you next week.